This is proving to be a very interesting day. Interesting, yes, yes. Interesting day thus far. The arrival stream. Oh, sorry about that. Yep. Okay. Sweet. I'm just, guys, we're just getting right into it. Let's just, let's go. All right. Let's do this. Let's go over here. We went through re entry. It's great. Maz's, Maz's, Maz's spin. <laughs> That's awesome. M A Z E S P dot I N. <laughs> That's great. All right. So, we're basically getting right into space news today. Uh, We're getting we're gonna get right in. There's a lot of weird stuff going on, but one of the non weird things um, is that Crew Two, the next uh, ISS flight, the next crew that's going up into space on a Dragon um, next week is coming uh, to KSC today. They're basically landing at KSC right now, and we're gonna cover it. And it should be pretty cool. What happened to the beard? I got rid of it, dude. It was, it was annoying. Look at, look at that. That's nice. Aerodynamic face. That's right. It's ablative. It's an ablative beard. It burns off. We have to go through reentry from time to time. No beard, no mullet. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, whoa. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. That's not true. Elon has a mullet as well. I know. How did that even happen? He didn't copy me. Should have gone for the handlebar. So youthful. Thanks. Oh boy. <laughs> Taking fashion advice. Baby J. That's right. That's right. So we're waiting on waiting on the crew. We're waiting on NASA to go live. It's it's going to be a second. Um there's been some interesting stuff going on here. Uh, yeah, for whatever reason, everyone, everyone. Oh yeah, I read the, <laughs> yeah. No, Victory, he hasn't. It's the cyberpunk haircut. Um, so, here, actually, that's a good picture. Oh. 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 Well, well we get, we'll talk about Crew 2 here. First. Here we go. Roger, zero G, and I feel fine. Who's up? 
Happy snow day. Snow day. No. 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 Oh, what the hell? What the hell is that about? See that airplane chat? I'm talking G5 for NASA. No more frequent flyer. Bum miles from my boys and girls. Oh yeah. Player. Player. This is Flaming Dragon. Oh, okay. Flaming Dragon. Yeah, Boxy, I know. Kind of sucks. All right. Here we go. Put the chocks in. Sound of jet engines. Yeah, we can, we can get rid of that. Talking Scorched Earth Mother Flexer. I know, serious. It's amazing. All right, powering down. Okay, engine shut down. Flip off to reserve power. Flip the avionics off. I don't know, Tessie. Yeah, it's crazy. Okay, so that's Bob Cabana over here on the right. He runs Kennedy Space Center. Oh, geez, look at those nice NASA helicopters behind them that aren't Hueys. That's great. No, the APU is still on, Tron. If this even has an APU, it might. You might need ground power. Yes, yes, that's it. Yeah. What sounds better, turbo on a super or jet engines? I'll take the jet engines. Are you still salty about the helos? They need to be Hueys, man. They need to be Hueys, okay? Yes, I am still very salty about that. Thank you very much. They have an APU. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's what we're hearing. That, because that they definitely shut the engines off. Oh, hey, guy. Dude, that guy's back in heat, dude. Guy's packing some freaking hardware, man. I want his job? I mean, I kind of want his job, too. Oh, Shane Kimberl walking out first. Megan MacArthur after that. Aki Hoshide. And Toma Piske. Yeah, I know. Pretty awesome. Thomas can Toma Cancellations? Hey, hey, hey. Piske is cool. I like him. Fly there. They didn't fly. They they had someone fly them there. I don't like that. Yeah, Draco. Where's the Russian? Not on this mission. It's a Gulfstream 4. 
Yeah, Dutch guy, that's right. It's not even a NASA aircraft. What is this? Where's the T-38s? And then they bought that crap box of a helicopter right there. Look at that thing. It looks like a toy. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. But the crew is cool. The NASA Gulfstream is in Baikonur to pick up Kate. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thomas is like, that's dumb. Alright. <laughs> I don't know what they're doing. I have no idea what they're doing. T-38s are at Ellington and Houston. Ma, that's where they came from. Oh. Should we go over the one with our names on it? <laughs> uh, what is happening, guys? Did we not rehearse this, or...? Can y'all hear me over the chat? Awesome. Welcome to the Kennedy Space Center. How great is it to have the Crew 2 crew here for the third launch of humans to space in less than a year? I mean, what an exciting time for our nation's human spaceflight program. Put these guys in that the like. Crew Dragon on a Falcon 9. And this is really cool. The Crew Dragon that they are flying on is the same one that flew Bob and Doug. So Megan gets to fly on the same vehicle that Bob flew on last May. And, uh, and this rocket that they're riding on, the Falcon 9, it's the same Falcon 9 that took the Crew 1 to orbit that we're going to bring home here at the end of the month. So I just like that. absolutely That's cool. an amazing time. Guys, it's great to have you here. It must be getting real, huh? Getting ready to launch. You guys know that safety is All right, core with at that, NASA. It's my pleasure to introduce our acting administrator, Steve Jerzyk. Steve? Yours, Steve Zick. Hey, thank you. Thank you, Bob. And um, first, I want to welcome our astronauts, Shane, Megan, Aki, and Toma. Uh, I know they're ready because they told us they were ready at last. I guess they flight a... readiness review. So welcome, guys, gals. Um, and yeah, we're going to do the third crew launch to the ISS this year. Um, Thursday, April 22nd, next Thursday, uh, with uh, on NASA we SpaceX's do, Crew Dragon Falcon 9. Uh, I've been with NASA a long time. They, they always put this in my remarks to remind me I've, I'm old, but I've been with NASA 32 <laughs> years, um, and it's been an amazing, amazing career. And, um, and oh, I'm yeah, never, so. um, it always ceases, um, never ceases to amaze me the talent, dedication, and bravery of our astronauts and our foreign partner astronauts. So thank you guys for what you do for NASA and the nation and, and the world. Um, I want to thank Bob Cabana and his team um, at KSC for all the work they're doing. Uh, on the ground to prepare for next week's launch. I also want to thank Mark Geyer and the team at Johnson Space Center and Jody Ray Singer, Draco. the team at Marshall Space Flight Center, for their hard work in getting to certification, flight certification for the Crew Crew 2 launch. A lot of hard work. And of course, I want to thank SpaceX and the SpaceX well, team. We'll see, Boxy. Uh, they have been incredible partners for enabling NASA's mi uh, vision for commercial space flight. And, um, and very importantly, getting astronauts to and from the ISS um, safely and effectively. Um, crew two, again, marks the third crewed commercial space flight mission to the ISS. Um, but there's a whole lot of firsts with this mission, some of which Bob has already mentioned. Um, for Crew Dragon and Falcon 9 for this mission, uh, like Bob mentioned, Crew Dragon Endeavor flew on the historic Demo 2 mission. Um, less than a year ago today. And the Falcon 9 um, flew the Crew-1 astronauts to ISS this past November. So reuse was really important. And um, it was a challenge for the NASA SpaceX team to certify both the spacecraft and the launch vehicle for, for flight for this mission. But they were more than up to the challenge. And we had 
a very successful um, flight readiness review yesterday. It's the first commercial mission flying two of our international partners to the station and returning them mm -hmm. home. It's the first commercial crew handover on the ISS, and it's the first time two commercial crew spacecraft will be docked to the station. So just an <laughs> incredibly exciting uh, mission. Um, Birds don't exist, And Ma. it's uh, a, just a coincidence that the, the day of launch for Crew-2 is on Earth Day, and it reminds us that of NASA's core mission to study the Earth uh, and conduct Earth science research uh, using remote sensing satellites. So NASA is ascent, this work is essential um, for the nation and the world in dealing with climate change. And we're, we not only, we, we also collaborate internationally on just about all our science missions, including our Earth science missions. So it's, it's a, not only an effort in the US, but across the globe. Um, we, uh, we use the unique vantage point of space um, to I'm study sorry. the Earth from the oceans to the atmospheres and really does anybody else find it funny? He's like, oh, it's launching on Earth Day. They're going to leave Earth on Earth Day. <laughs> I, I know. Climate, yeah, yes, important. Absolutely. But I, I, it's still kind of funny. They're, on Earth Day, they're going to leave. Soon. Sorry. Most of our kind of a stretch, satellites man. are down-looking and are, are in a orbit over the poles. Uh, and we can image the Earth's motions <laughs> as the Earth rotates under the satellite. Sorry. Uh, ISS sorry. is in an inclined sorry. orbit. So for some uh, remote sensing uh, instruments and, and <laughs> observations mean, that guy. ISS <laughs> provides a unique platform um, to get those measurements and to do Earth science research. So it's, a, it's becoming more and more a part of the ISS mission. And of course, commercial crews enabling an asset to have <laughs> crew members on the International Space, space Station, uh, not only to Happy Earth maintain Day. and Bye. do Earth <laughs> observations, but also <laughs> do the critical research and technology <laughs> development for our commercial partners and, um, and to enable our Artemis missions, our uh, crewed missions to the moon, and eventually our, uh, our human mission to Mars. To Mars uh, board. So I'm proud today to be joined by representatives from JAXA and ESA, like, well, the agencies that great. have contributed to much of our exploration of space. Um, so I want a thank you to uh, Junichi Sakai, manager of the ISS program at JAXA, and Frank Davina, manager of the ISS program at ESA. And now I'd like to hand it over to Frank. Frank. Thank you very much, uh, Steve. Uh, good uh, afternoon, everybody. Uh, I would like to start uh, by uh, saying that, uh, of course, ESA is uh, very happy and very grateful that we can hear Frank stay here and see that uh, Toma will be our first uh, ESA astronaut to fly on the uh, US commercial crew vehicle. I would like to thank uh, all the partners that made this possible, uh, NASA, of course, but also SpaceX and uh, all the other partners from the International Space Station, uh, because this is, of course, uh, only possible when we all continue to work uh, together. Uh, it's a number of firsts. Uh, as uh, Steve mentioned, it's also the first for us, uh, of course, to fly an ESA astronaut on a, on a Crew Dragon vehicle. Uh, our team has uh, worked alongside the uh, NASA teams and the SpaceX teams to make oh, sure okay. that we can do this in all safety. And as uh, Steve mentioned yesterday, we had a very successful FRR, so we are uh, ready yeah, to fly and Thomas, we are ready to go. Uh, it's also important for us that uh, we see that uh, with uh, the commercial crew, we will now have four USOS astronauts on orbit, uh, not only with uh, this flight, it started of course with uh, crew one, but crew two, and also with the coming flights that uh, will come up because that significantly increases the time for utilization uh, in the European, uh, in the uh, ISS. And of course, uh, utilization is for ESA, uh, one of the main drivers why we fly and why we participate in the uh, International Space Station. So thanks to uh, all these crew members now, and we will not only have four, we will have five, uh, because uh, we launched uh, just a couple of days ago, uh, also on the Soyuz, we will have five USOS crew members, so we will have plenty of time to do, uh, to do science on, on board of the space station. Uh, last but not least, uh, this is a flight in a number of series. Uh, Toma will be the first one, but Matthias Maurer will fly already in uh, fall this year. And after Matthias, we will have Samantha flying as well. Jawohl. So for the first time, uh, three flights in a row for a year and a half, we will have European astronauts on board of the, the International Space Station. So that also shows that ESA is growing and is continuing to invest more 
in exploration and in uh, human spaceflight, which is uh, great alongside with our uh, other partners. We will also see the MLM launched during this, uh, this flight with our Russian colleagues, and on board of that we will have the European robotic arm, uh, something that we have been looking very much forward for to, to have on orbit, and Toma will also be involved uh, in the uh, first checkouts of the European uh, robotic arm, uh, Toma. so great for that. That's going to be cool. And so last but not I'm least, uh, at the end of the that. mission, Toma will be the commander to receive also Matthias, and, and that's for Europe is a big sign that we will have a European commander together with uh, two European astronauts on the International Oof. Space Station. So once again, folks, uh, congratulations. <coughs> uh, I see that you're ready. I see that you're happy to fly. Uh, I was there many years ago in your position. Uh, I would prefer to be in your position than standing here, to be, uh, to be very honest. But I know that Thomas never wants that. So uh, <laughs> unfortunately, so uh, Godspeed, guys, uh, and uh, like Megan, that guy uh, makes me all laugh. the best, and uh, <laughs> see you on orbit. Thank no, you very much. No, 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 no. <laughs> and uh, I come, would like to pass the word here. now to uh, Mr. Sakai from the, the ISS <laughs> program manager from uh, JAXA. He's a cheeky guy. It's funny as hell. Thank you, Frank. Um, I've said uh, uh, this phrase uh, many times since last year, but uh, I'll repeat again. On behalf of JAXA, I would like to sincerely express our appreciation to NASA leadership, SpaceX, and all the colleagues who worked so hard for crew to launch operations, uh, launch preparation, and continuing ISS operation under such a uh, tough COVID-19 right situation. It right is there. a great honor for Bonjour, all the Japanese people, including me, the Japanese astronaut uh, board forefront uh, commercial spacecraft of Crew Dragon twice in a row with international space international partners. I do believe that uh, the cross make. relationship and uh, partnership between the between international partners, uh, especially NASA, has brought this uh, for the. Uh, Space cooperation uh, for a long time. While the Tokyo Olympic and Paralympic is being held on the ground, maybe. Now, I believe uh, Japanese astronaut Hoshide Akihiko Aki will lead Expedition 65 missions as a commander Hoshide and San. succeed in the mission with. Supreme NASA and ESA Craig astronaut. Never give up. I'm looking forward to this coming launch and we'll continue our preparation for the uh, launch operations and uh, on, our, on our own. So I pray that you are safe uh, launch and return. And see you, see, see you six months later, guys. <laughs> Come back, Kudasai. Thank you for your attention. Arigato. Sakai All right, now the real reason you're here. Uh, as the ladder was coming down, Frank and I were talking, and uh, Frank said, you know, when the plane lands at the launch site, that's when you realize it's getting real. And uh, it's certainly getting real for this crew, and it's my extreme pleasure to introduce to you the commander who's going to introduce the rest of his crew, Colonel Shane Kimbrough, Commander, Crew 2. Shane. Thank you, Colonel Cabana, and good Golf afternoon. Clap. It is awesome being at Kennedy Space Center, um, especially on launch week, like Colonel Cabana was talking about. It's definitely getting real. Um, our crew is really well trained, extremely well trained um, from the NASA, the SpaceX, and the international partner teams. So we are really excited and ready to go. Um, I'm going to introduce to you uh, one of my crewmates, the only one of our crew that's wearing a Mach 26 patch, and that's our pilot, Megan yeah. McCarthy. Yeah! Yeah! Megan's a bam! Thanks, Shane. Uh, it's great to see everybody here. It's really great to be hey, here. Marcus. It's 
we come in uh, on the on the plane over here, and we got to, to fly Shuttle by pilot. the pad and see our rocket getting ready to We're go. We're friends now. And it's just an amazing feeling. I've gotten to do that before, and there really there's nothing like it when you look out the window and see a spaceship getting prepared and realize that uh, you're gonna be riding on it in a few days. So it really is a wonderful feeling. Um, and I just wanna take a moment to thank the, the people that get us here, that get us ready, and that get all of this ready to make it happen. No, it's Mark a huge number of people. Um, and I just Shuttle really pilot. wanna take every opportunity to, to say thank you because we know how much work it takes to get here and uh, we really appreciate it. And that includes our families, of course, um, sacrificing along the way as we prepare. So just wanna uh, take a moment to thank everyone. I also uh, want to introduce our next crewmate, a uh, mission specialist for Crew Dragon and also mission commander for Increment 65, Aki Hoshide. Hoshide Sawa! Uh, thank you, Megan, and uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, it's, a, it's an honor to be here today, and it's a very exciting moment for us. Um, we know Dude, that a lot really of effort good. came in uh, to prepare the capsule, the rocket, and preparing us in training. And uh, we all thank, for, thank everyone for that. And uh, it's an honor to be part of this team. Uh, looking forward Launches to next week, flight guys. And a 22nd. Mission. And uh, I'd like to continue in uh, Japanese. えー、これまでえ、クルードラゴンのカプセルロケットそして我々を訓練してま、準備してくれた多くの皆さんに感謝申し上げます。頑張ってきます。Alright, with that, um, I'm going to introduce uh, the one and only uh, Toma Pesque, mission specialist and ESA astronaut. Quick translate, he said the same thing. He said the same thing he said in English for the most part. Um, all right, so like it's been said before, um, every day there's a major milestone that's happening that's bringing us closer to this the light. Guy. And it feels this more real. This guy is a chad and a um, half. But it doesn't just happen like this. It takes a lot of hard work. And uh, NASA and the partners make it seem routine, but it's not. We know it's not. Uh, we know there's a lot of work that goes into it. So we'd like to thank all those people. I get bits and pieces. And uh, we take them in our hearts. No, and we'll we'll bring a, a bit of them uh, together with us on the, on the space station. Um, I want to say a few words in French as well, uh, if you allow me. Um, Aujourd'hui, c'est le c'est le premier jour où nous arrivons ici à Cap Canaveral. On est on est prêt, l'équipage est prêt, euh, côté véhicule, tout est prêt. Je voudrais prendre vraiment une minute pour remercier tous les gens, que ce soit ici à la NASA, ailleurs, euh, chez nous, en Europe, partout dans tous les pays membres de l'Agence spatiale européenne, au Japon, en Russie, qui ont travaillé sur ce programme et qui sont et c'est la somme de leur travail qui nous permet à nous d'aller dans l'espace. Donc on les emmènera un peu avec nous. Um, and because I'm speaking last, I don't get to introduce anybody. I think that's unfair. Um, so in, and instead of introducing anybody, I'll, uh, I'll ask you to notice Megan's shoes if you haven't done so yet, because uh, they're pretty awesome. And there's talk of us all wearing the same shoes, but for some reason she was outvoted. But please enjoy the shoes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hey, I'm Kyle Herring with NASA Public Affairs here at the Kennedy Space Center. Um, uh, like we only Tom. have about Tom 10 minutes cool. with this crew. Um, <laughs> Based on the launch time, you guys can probably imagine they're going to be doing some pretty significant sleep shifting, and their bedtime, I think, it's is like about 6 p.m., and they've sink. got a bunch of stuff to do before that. So um, if you don't mind, ask nice, one question, it. and we'll see how many we can get through before I run out of time, and uh, we'll start with you, Marcia. Go ahead. Um, Marcia Dunn, Associated Press for Commander Kimbrough, probably. Um, this still feels new, SpaceX crew flights. There's only been two. Do you see this as a test flight in part, at least for your crew? Do you feel like test pilots, and especially considering that the first time that reused rockets and capsules will be used for the astronauts? Thanks. Yeah, we're excited. To, thanks, Marcia. We're excited to fly in these flight-proven vehicles um, that you mentioned. Um, you know, certainly I think all of them, until we get several years under our belt, should be considered test flights. Um, to answer your question. So we're very confident in the team that got us ready, that's, that are working on the vehicles. We don't have any issues with that. Um, and we're ready to fly here in like about five and a half days, I think now. So thanks. Hi, I'm Tetsaro Sohe from NHK, Japan Broadcast Corporation. And this question is for Aki Hoshide. And let me, allow me to ask a question in Japanese. Uh, 
また非常に多様なクルーを率いるコマンダーという立場になりますが今回のフライトどういう何を楽しみにされているでしょうかそれと予定通り行けばですねオリンピックを宇宙から見ることになるかと思うんですけれどもそれについてあの今どんなふうなお気持ちでいらっしゃるかお知らせください。はい、ありがとうございます。えー、そうですね、あのーえー、まあ、各、えー、国籍のクルーを率いる形になりますけれども、あの皆さん非常に訓練もしっかりされていて、あの経験豊富なクルーに恵まれたと思っています。なので、あのコマンダーとしてはですね、えー、まあ、しっかりチームをまとめて地上のチームと一体となって、えー、スクラムを組んでですね。えー、ミッションに臨みたいというふうに思っております。No, それからオリンピック・パラリンピック、えー、の期間にあの軌道上にいるということなので、まあ、軌道上からすべ、えー、てのアスリートに声援を送り、えー、そして、まあ、軌道上では軌道上で、えーまあ、オリンピックをしたいというふうに思っております。Think... Do you mind in English? In English? Okay.、Yeah. Let's see, what was that? <laughs> So I'm,、uh, I'm very fortunate to have a, a very、uh, experienced crew members on board the space station when I'm、uh, the commander of the Increment 65.、See. And、uh, it's going to be a lot of fun.、Uh, we're going to have a great、uh, mission, I'm sure about that. And in terms of、uh, Olympics、uh, and the Special Olympics,、uh, we'll be up there during that time frame. So we'll enjoy and root for every single athlete that competes in that. And、uh, we'll have our own Olympics. I'm bored. <laughs> oh, God. No. <laughs> Hi, Stephen Clark from Space Flight Now. My question is for Megan MacArthur.、Uh, this will be your first trip to the International Space Station, your first flight in、uh, over a decade, and a new type of rocket, a new type of spacecraft.、Uh, what about all that excites you most, and what are you most looking forward to?、Um, well, the, the whole thing, of course, is exciting. Getting to fly on a new vehicle, getting to、uh, stay in space long duration is something obviously completely new for me. I think it's going to be like the difference between visiting a country for a business trip and, and then maybe moving there you know, longer term. So I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what those differences are. And I'm very lucky to have three very experienced crewmates,、uh, actually, probably five very experienced crewmates who are going to really be able to show me the ropes. So I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And、uh, I, I just am really looking forward to the whole experience getting started. Thanks. Yeah, it's going to be cool. Matt Trezza, Fox 35 News Orlando. We have an international you, crew here Toma, right now. I can't now. stop、the、looking at her shoes. They're a different. Pandemic. What's it been like preparing and training for this mission under these circumstances, under these conditions? And has it played into your training at all? That hat, though. You do it. Hey, thanks for the question. It's definitely played into our training, as you might imagine. Uh, it's really a testament to the training teams、uh, at all the centers around the world that it's a Florida adapted, thing, Nolte.、Uh, and been able to train us.、Uh, even just getting travel between the different countries has yeah, been、Badger. a challenge, but it,、uh, it's all worked out. And we've been very blessed to, to you know, begin, spend a lot of time with these folks behind me, and we've gotten to be really, really good friends, which is only going to play out further、um, on the space、Shows、station. And that's really only because of the pandemic. So there's some silver linings, believe it or not. To it,、uh, and we saw that through our training. So the training didn't you know, miss a beat, honestly. We had to make some adjustments,、uh, but the teams did a fabulous job getting us ready to go. Hi, Irene Klotz with Aviation Week and Space Technology for Shane.、Um, if plans hold, you're going to be on board、uh, when SpaceX flies a private mission. Did you have any special training to accommodate not just one, but four guests? And do you have any concerns about? That many non professional astronauts being on the station so early in the program. Thanks. Yeah, we didn't get any special training. Of course, we know that、uh, Inspiration 4 missions is really exciting and it's going to come up hopefully in the fall.、Um, if we're lucky, we'll get a chance to see it. But if not, then Crew 3 will get the pleasure of seeing them on board. Hello,、uh, Loïc de la Mornay. I'm a reporter from the French National TV. May I ask a question in French to, to, to Thomas for the European media?、Hmm. Uh, Thomas, est-ce que vous pourriez nous donner votre état d'esprit de partir de cet endroit、euh, historique, symbolique, Cap Kennedy J'imagine qu'enfant,、euh, comme beaucoup d'entre nous, vous y, avez, vous y avez rêvé. Et puis de nous parler de cette nouvelle ère. Vous êtes le premier astronaute européen à partir dans un, dans un vaisseau privé. Qu'est-ce que ça représente, cette nouvelle ère, ce nouvel accès à l'espace privé pour tous les astronautes et notamment les astronautes européens Je pense d'abord qu'effectivement, cet endroit, c'est un petit peu magique. Pour moi, je suis. 
Je suis, euh, ça fait un peu plus de 10 ans que je suis astronaute, donc maintenant, même si je suis encore le plus jeune de, le, de l'ESA, mais ça ne va pas durer parce qu'on a une sélection euh, qui arrive cette année, euh, je suis quand même un vétéran et pourtant, je n'étais jamais vraiment venu ici. Et du coup, je découvre un peu tout. Donc, c'est quand même super, euh, super enthousiasmant pour moi, après 10 ans de carrière, de, de recommencer un petit peu à zéro. Et j'ai l'impression d'être comme un gamin et de, et de découvrir toutes les installations et les gens qui ont fait vivre euh, eh ben, le programme de la navette spatiale, les programmes qui l'ont précédé et puis qu'on, qu'on continuait à, à maintenir la base pendant ces années où, où on n'avait plus de, de départ depuis ici. Euh, je pense que c'est important d'avoir plusieurs moyens d'accès à la station spatiale, ça c'est, ça c'est certain. Euh, parce, pourquoi Parce qu'on n'est jamais à l'abri Excellent. d'un problème technique, c'est difficile d'envoyer des gens dans l'espace. Euh, on arrive à faire marcher ça quasiment tous les yeah, jours, yeah. mais c'est quand même un petit miracle. Euh, donc c'est important d'avoir une redondance et d'avoir, bah, si jamais ça devait se passer mal d'un côté, pour la route de l'Est, celle du Soyuz que j'ai empruntée la dernière fois, bah, d'avoir une route à l'Ouest pour rejoindre la station, ça c'est important. Euh, ce que ça veut dire aussi, c'est que maintenant, bah, c'est une nouvelle époque, comme vous l'avez dit, de, pour les vols habitants, yeah, jamais eu autant de véhicules qu'en ce moment, hein, parce qu'on en a bah, trois ou quatre euh, aux états unis euh, chez nos collègues chinois, euh, chez les Russes, les Indiens ont leur, euh, ont leur programme, il y a beaucoup de nations qui veulent aller dans l'espace, on veut aller plus loin, on veut dépasser l'orbite basse terrestre, euh, donc bah, moi je pense que c'est l'âge d'or des vols habités qu'on vit en ce moment, les gens ne se rendent pas compte, on regarde beaucoup en arrière pour, le, pour les années 60 et les missions vers la Lune, et dans quelques années on aura fait quelque chose d'encore plus ambitieux, euh, dans la position où je me trouve moi c'est évidemment super enthousiasmant, mais j'espère que ça l'est aussi pour tout le monde, parce que cette aventure on n'essaie pas de la vivre égoïstement, mais on essaie vraiment de la partager, euh, et notamment bah, parce que ce qu'on fait dans l'espace, on, on espère, on pense que ça sert à tous. Euh, donc voilà, moi je vous engage à, à, à suivre ça, et en tout cas on va faire de notre mieux pour le, pour le partager. Thomas, is there a is there a short English translation? To that? <laughs> uh, the sh- very short English is is uh, I'm excited to be here at KSC because I've I haven't been here before. I've been an astronaut for more than 10 years, uh, so kind of a veteran, and and yet I'm 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 discovering everything here. This is all new to me, the the place and the people who've made the space shuttle program go. So I'm uh, very honored to. Uh, to be in that position and the rest of the question was about the new era of human spaceflight with private public partnership uh, and i think we're living in the golden age of human spaceflight there's never been that many ways to go into space uh, looks like everybody every country has a project or a spacecraft that's uh, as capable of flying or will be capable of flying soon so it's usually exciting in in our position as astronauts obviously but i hope as well for the public because we're doing this for them we're hoping that what we're achieving in space uh, benefits to everyone so follow the journey And hi, I'm Melanie Cowan from the European Space Agency. A question for Tomo. (laughs) After following in the footsteps of Gagarin for your first launch, could you give us your thoughts about looking out the window, seeing your vehicle getting prepared, knowing that you're going to be following in the footsteps of the Apollo astronauts? And if you could say a few words about the work you're doing on board the International Space Station that will enable the next generation of ESA astronauts to go forward to the moon and beyond. Thanks, Melanie. It's good to see you here. Um, and that's a lot of footsteps to, to follow in, uh, but we're, we're doing our best. Um, like I said, there's a lot of history here. There was a lot of history in Baikonur. There's a lot of tradition, uh, but we're actually really lucky because now with, with SpaceX, with what SpaceX is doing with NASA and Crew Dragon, we get to come up with our own new traditions, which is pretty awesome. Um, so we're, we're honored. We're really doing our best. Um, and what we'll be doing on board, no, actually on board the space so. station, is 232 experiment, I think, for increment 65, which is unbelievable. It feels like every week we're, we're just topping the, the record of science that we've done before. Um, there's 40 coming from ESA, uh, 12 run by CNES directly. Um, and I think that's what all this research that we're constantly feeding on the space sta- to the space station is what enables us Uh, to keep going as, as a research a- agency for ESA. So we have all those goals for the mission, there's operational goals, research goals, uh, very packed schedule. We'll try to do our best and then hand over uh, at least the European part to Matthias Maurer, my colleague from Germany at the end of the mission. And then he will himself, if everything goes according to plan, hand it over to uh, Samantha. And uh, we, like Frank said, we, we plan to be a reliable partner uh, for the years to come and for what's coming after ISS, and that's, and that's the Artemis program. So we're trying to lay the foundations for this, um, and it's Let's awesome go. doing a good job on board the ISS. Thank you. Okay, that's all the time we have for questions. Um, we are gonna set up for a, a photo op before the, these folks get out of here, uh, but I do want to uh, 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 let you know the, yeah, the mission is obviously is heard. Cool. Is, He's scheduled cool for uh, next Thursday morning, early, 6.11 and 46 seconds. Don't be late for that launch. Uh, it's an instantaneous launch window, so um, uh, we don't have a lengthy launch window. So 
Don't be late for that. I'm going to uh, let us end our program and turn it back Same over to, to you. the acting administrator, Steve Jerzyk. All right, let's see what Steve says here. Listen, hey, guys. thank you. Just a couple of things in closing. Um, first, um, Kate Rubens and her Russian colleagues are returning um, to Earth tonight, undocked tonight and uh, returning um, on their Soyuz. So I wanted to recognize that. Before we launch, we have an undock and landing. Um, also, later today, um, we have an important announcement on relative to the human landing system, HLS. So we'll be um, uh, doing a press teleconference at 4 o'clock today. Um, so hopefully you can join us for that. Okay, got it. We'll be and there. And then with that, um, glad Holy to see crap. you here. Uh, we, we are ready. I know you're ready. Um, so uh, go, go Dragon, go Falcon 9, go Crew 2. Thank you, everybody. I'm nervous. I'm nervous from that one, man. I'm nervous now. Oh, crap. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, now I'm nervous. Now I am nervous. That was the second news. Everyone is, uh, everyone's reporting that there's going to be an announcement on HLS today, and then that was the, the acting NASA administrator confirming that. What's your pick? Oh, uh, uh, what happened to your face? Reentry, man. Reentry. People don't like my picks, Gary. They really don't. I think that I have two, two things. Two things I think would be a good way to do this, okay? First and foremost, if I have to pick two. Oh man, people are gonna people are gonna hate me for this. I'm picking SpaceX and National Team. And it's not that Dynetics Lander is bad either. I like Dynetics Lander. If you say national team, you're wrong. I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't mind Dynetics and SpaceX either. That's fine. However, Eric thinks, yeah, oh, it wouldn't surprise me if they gave it all to SpaceX. If they do that, there should be an investigation. Yeah, there, that, that's, that, there's no way that's happening. Hamburger, please. All right. Anyway, so with that being said, I we brainstormed a second option on chat la, in chat last night. Okay, my second option would be what happened with Commercial Crew. Okay, so what did happen with Commercial Crew? Commercial Crew had three entrants, and then they picked two, just like they're doing now. What did they do with that? Well. They picked Starliner and Dragon, right? Dream Chaser didn't get a contract for commercial crew. But NASA, a couple weeks later, added Dream Chaser in an unmanned capacity to the commercial resupply program when they didn't need to. Uh, they, what they did was for the first round of commercial resupply contracts, so that's like CR, CRS-1 through CRS-20, they had two suppliers to the ISS, Antares with Cygnus and Dragon 1 with SpaceX, right? For commercial resupply 2, which is basically to the rest of the space station, to the end of the space station's usefulness, I suppose, uh, they have three resuppliers. They have Dream Chaser, Cygnus, and Dragon 2 Cargo. What they did was they found a way to get Dream Chaser the funding that it needs to get at least on orbit. Not with crew, but on orbit. Now, I think that that's a good idea, okay? A, first and foremost, I think that that's a good idea because I'm greedy and I want more space things, okay? Now, think about this. Let me play this one off you, you guys' minds for a second. For human landing system, if NASA chose Dynetics and the national team and then roped Starship into... Artem uh, Gateway Logistics, 
So like roped it into Artemis Unmanned. And you have Dynetics and National Team as your landers, representing a two stage el- or a three stage element and a single stage element to land people and cargo down onto the surface. And then you have SpaceX plop a starship down on the surface to use as a big base, instant moon base uh, on the surface. I think that that's a good idea. That's what they should do. I think they should spin Starship off into an unmanned resupply or an unmanned base building contract and have Starship land on the moon to drop a base module down. Can you imagine two or three Starships landing next to each other? You'd have a you'd have a base that's the size of Skylab on the surface of the moon like that. How do you weld when you're on the moon? Ground something out and arc some electricity. Thank you, Chief. Yep. I like the idea of spinning Starship off and giving the giving SpaceX a separate contract for unmanned Starship landings on the moon and then have Dynetics and the national team be the way to land people down on the surface. I think that's a good way. Literally do exactly what NASA did with commercial crew. Because SpaceX is going to the moon. SpaceX is going to the moon, whether you like it or not. They're going to do it. Now, the question is, with NASA, do you want to be a part of it? Check the link. So this is Christian Davenport for HLS. SpaceX bid $2.9 billion for the NASA lunar landing system, far below Blue Origin and Dynetics, and won the contract according to a, a source selection document obtained by the Post. Dude, if they soul if they soul source SpaceX, I'm gonna be a little I'm gonna be a little annoyed. If they soul source SpaceX, I'm gonna be a little pissed off. Cause Christian Davenport said that, and Eric Berger said that this this morning. If they sole source anybody, I'm going to be upset. That's correct, Wisp. So, there's a. Keep in mind, we haven't heard anything yet. We'll hear anything. We'll hear something in about two and a half hours when that when NASA does the presser regarding HLS. Um. We heard Eric Berger talk about them sole sourcing SpaceX for human landing system. For Starship, I, I, if they do that, I'm going to be a little upset. Um, and I love SpaceX, too, for what it's worth. I just don't think it's wise have... I mean, NASA up and... Basically, everything up until Gateway, they have redundant dissimilar, with the exception of SLS. Because Orion's the only deep space capsule we have right now. 4 p.m. Eastern, Angry Pixel. Yeah. Exactly, Pi Power. If if they sole source SpaceX, I'm gonna be a little annoyed. I really and once again, I love SpaceX and I will cheer them on every step of the way. I don't like that. I don't like having one way to do things with space. You should always have two. But they're on a tight budget. Maybe it was the only option. Something, something, underfunding, something, something, something. Something, something, underfunding, something, something, unforeseen consequences, something, something, something. They underfunded it for for this year, Gorn. Like by a long shot. NASA requested like a billion dollars and they gave him like 400 or something. 400 million. Could they still pick another one later? Cairo, there's a lot of things that you can do. Uh, 
guys, I, I, I love, I think Starship is a great way to do it for what it's worth. A Starship lander, you'd be stupid to not utilize that. Because like I said, SpaceX is going to the moon whether you like it or not. Um, they're going to have the architecture to be able to do that. I firmly believe that Starship is going to work. Elon Musk has enough brass to pull that off, I'm pretty dang sure. Um, however, it would be, I'd be remiss in saying that I don't see other redeeming qualities in the other landing systems. Dynetics has a reusable small cargo lander that can, it's an overhanging lander, so stuff can, you can bolt stuff up to it and drop it out and bring it back, right? So that lander could land Jeeps, trucks, rovers down on the moon, modules, you could couple modules together. It's very, very flexible. On the other hand, the national team lander, I think is super flexible because y you have a complicated vehicle, but that complicated vehicle can afford you super high mission flexibility. So what does that mean? That means that SLS could launch with national lander parts on it and SLS Block 1B could be used for useful things, like really useful things. Like, oh, I don't know, bringing up a new, new parts of a lander every time. If they choose to make the, dis, uh, the transfer stage element of the national team's lander reusable, then you just park that thing up at the gateway and you use it like the transfer stages that we have in, in mission mode. I like that. I like that a lot. You have SLS bring up the ascent module. You have New Glenn shoot the descent module out. Couple that whole thing, use Orion to couple the whole thing, uh, put the whole thing together out at the gateway, and boom. That's really, really flexible architecture. You could do a lot with that. You could do a lot of cool things with that. There's a lot of, lot of flexibility there. Okay, what's, what's Mike reporting? What's Mike Baylor reporting? NASA's choosing between NASA versus SpaceX or Starship versus SLS with the HLS award. You would think they would prefer the latter. I say Starship versus SLS because if Starship ends up working, then SLS becomes a less necessary capability. I disagree fundamentally, but all right. Okay, Eric, here's the deal. A sole source award to SpaceX for... I, I, here's the deal. Uh, that that's one of those things that jars on me nowadays. What's the deal, Eric? What do we got? A sole source award to SpaceX for the human landing system is going to be hugely unpopular in Congress. Yes, but it means that NASA is serious about getting to the moon with the funding they have. And if Congress adds the budget, NASA can bring on an HLS competitor. It's kind of a stretch, but yeah, I, I guess. I, I mean, I guess that's right. To be honest, if I were in charge of NASA, I'd go for the big one. See, I think honestly, these two, okay, like here's the thing. All right. I say here's the thing, not here's the deal. <laughs> Maybe it's NASA's way of getting more money for Congress. I mean, Geek, if, if NASA chooses SpaceX, Congress is going to be pissed and then overfund HL. Yeah, see, what Eric is saying is not, that's not a bad move. Now that I'm thinking about it, I'm, I'm dead serious. If they choose, if they choose Starship, that could piss off some people, and they're gonna be like, "No, screw you! We're gonna overfund the program, and now you have to pick all three of them." You know that that it's a stretch, but it could work. Let's see. We'll see how it pays off. But yeah. Okay, but end time. I got you. Yeah, blue. It's a risk, no doubt. I that doesn't NASA doesn't that doesn't sound like NASA taking that kind of risk. But Eric, that, that's a point nonetheless. I agree, nuclear. Yes. Yeah, but Tessa, this look. Now, guys, Jim was good at doing this. Jim was good at playing this game. And you know what you know what Jim never did? 
he never directly stuck it to Congress and said, screw you. All right. He worked with them and he, he, he made plays to get Congress to give him more money for different programs. All right. He never stuck it directly to them, which is why I'm not sure that this is a good idea. What if it goes the underway, other way and results in underfunding? Exactly. You're playing a game here. I, Jim never would put, Jim would have never put NASA in this position. I, that's why, I, I mean, it's a point, I guess, but I don't, I don't think that's a good idea. I agree, Phil. I No, Nuclear, I don't think sole sourcing SpaceX is a safe risk at all. I think that's a very bad idea. He's not, yeah, Bill Nelson is not in there yet, Tessa. He's, his confirmation is soon, actually. I, I don't know, Shaw. NASA just decided to just conveniently schedule the content far enough out where it's hard to do stuff up in Kerbal. Like, it's like an hour between each segment, you know? Jim would probably do what Eric Berger said. No, he wouldn't. No, no, he wouldn't. Yeah, maybe scary. What if they give nothing to SpaceX and fund everything else? Oh, yeah, we've seen that, Boxy. It's doable you proved that yesterday. Not with HLS, Tessa. I want to listen to everything. That's bold, Drunksville, reporting that before. Uh... That's bold, reporting that Discovery. SpaceX has won the up. HLS bid before NASA even reports it. That's a really bold thing to do. Yeah, we made Orbit Jackery. The crew is up there. We're good to go. Read the subheader. He wrote it so fast. The comp, the comp nay. We don't know that for sure, Jack. We'll wait for uh, wait for NASA. NASA is going to have a presser in about two hour fifteen. I'm good, Joshy. How are you? When is there not, Phil? That's good. Concur with Tessa, guys. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Let's let's go land people on the moon. Well, I have to answer questions about HLS all day. You guys, man, you guys really don't think about this. It's just verbal diarrhea in chat, right? Guys, are you crazy? You guys know good and well I'm going to be sitting here answering questions about HLS for the next eight hours. Don't be stupid. I'm not going to, I'm not, I don't want to play as, play KSP and then have someone ask me a question and then go to answer that question and screw something up. I'm not doing that. You can do other stuff like prepping for the next mission. Yeah, I guess, Jack. What is the payload capacity difference in Starship versus the other options? On a cage, um, this Lunar Starship could move these two things to the moon as cargo. That's your payload options. Um, it's quite high. Heck, build a mobile stairway for Dart. Now, that might be something I could get behind. So, if trying to colonize the moon, Starship makes the most sense. Yeah, Onikage, but that's not the point of HLS. The point is to just get down to the surface. If 
Soul sourcing it is a bad idea, guys. I will go out and say it. Even if the even if the company that I want I wanted to get a contract still got it. I don't. Uh, I don't. But I, again, I don't know. Nice, Penta. Also, there's Artemis news. Too many things is that NASA still hasn't authorized SpaceX to start Gateway Logistics. And second, that Dragon XL will be disposed of in a heliocentric orbit. No return to Earth and no smashing onto the moon. Cool. Oh, I mean, yeah, Phil, it's not going to have enough Delta V to do that. And it doesn't have a heat shield either. What's the best option? Go at throttle up. Hey, Rockets, what's up? Joe, what's that? That's a really awesome pick. Really awesome thing from Joe right there. Hang on. Let me see. What do we got from Joe here? Cool. That's awesome. That's awesome. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, no. That's cool. Joe's moving up in the world. Pretty neat. So when are you building one? Uh, I don't know. When's the HLS news today? Four. Yeah, see, this is another good point. Good point by Michael here. The HLS election has implications beyond Dianetics and the national team. Dianetics and the national team landers. It means no HLS launches for Vulcan, New Glenn, or SLS. Starship can only be launched on Super Heavy. I don't like that. Thomas, NASA is going to Pluto. NASA funds research into landing a spacecraft on Pluto. Neat. That's why I like the national team. It gives New Glenn a mission to do. It gives SLS missions to do. How will Artemis work? I'm guessing that S well, SLS is going to have a mission to do because Orion has to go find... Um, Lunar Starship. Oh, Dynetics flying Vulcan. Yep, yep. What would they use SLS for? Angry Pixel SLS would be used to get people there. Hmm. Huh. Okay, so this just popped back into your head. HLS was originally going to be sole source from two lander designs. Jim made it dual source from three landers, and now that Jim is gone, they went back to the original plan. When, and Thomas, my my re, my rebuttal to that is when when did Jim ever make a bad decision?
when he left. <laughs> he was getting muscled out anyway, PY. That's how we do things over here. Look, Jim had some bad things here and there. Like, that whole fiasco with Doug Lavero in the HLS was not a good idea. But in terms of architecture and how to source NASA contracts, the guy, the guy exceeded expectations pretty much every time. If that source to say was true, how much money do you think the national team asked for? Yeah. Well. Yeah, getting rid of Gerst, I'm not sure was the right move either, but. Can Orion be fitted to super heavy? No. <laughs> the national team asked for 10 billion. Where'd you get that from, Drake? Yeah, Jack Tank, that might... Guys, that might be the reason why they sole source them. Because they know Congress is going to penny pinch them. And they know SpaceX can make up, can pick up the slack. That's not a... Oh, boy. If that's the case, then... I, I mean, I hope not. I hope not. But, hey, nothing's happened yet, so let's just chill. Yeah, Phil, I know. Well, guys, you got to remember, total cost involved, okay? $10 billion for human landing system doesn't mean that it's $10 billion a pop, okay? $10 billion for the human landing system means entire total cost involved. Basically developing the entire thing and getting it, um, getting it, to the surface, all the research and development, and then one launch. God, I hope so, Phil. Soul sourcing is really not a good idea. Um, that's... Tart is docked with the station. Yep, Wii Sports, that's correct. Thought too with this contract win, does it does this give tax support from NASA for Elon's Mars program? Tax support. What's tax support? If this is sole source, Artemis may as well be called a continuation of Constellation. Well, yeah, I guess. Typo, I meant technical. I mean, it'll help in some way, shape, or form. <laughs> All right, well, we'll wait and see what happens, guys. Nothing has happened yet, so we'll figure it out from there. We'll see, Phil. We'll see what happens. 
What do you think if national team loses the HLS bid? How badly will that impact New Glenn's? Yeah, it'll it'll affect it, Drake. All right, what time is it? It's two. Um, I got to look at the schedule for today. Hang on one second. So. Okay. All right. So let me, let me think of the schedule for the rest of the day. So at four, at four, we have the HLS announcement. And then at 9.15, 9.15, we have Soyuz undocking. And then at 11.30, we have the Dior, we have the re-entry for Soyuz. And they're scheduled to land at 1. Okay. Yeah, okay. We can shuffle the time around just fine. We still have time for early hours, so... All right, that's what I'll do. Let's go see what's going on in the in the Minecraft city. We'll do that basically, and I'll take my break at three thirty. So we'll we'll get an hour and a half of Minecraft, and then four to six we'll talk about HLS, and then six to six to nine we we go back to the moon. That three hours should be enough to get that all done. the The crew's already in space. We don't need to integrate any launches today. It's just go to the moon and back. So. Hey, Boke, what's up, man? How's the square body? Still dead in the water? I mean, it is a Chevy after all. No, I'm I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to balance a bunch of things. NASA just decided to hold a bunch of press conferences for a bunch of new information about what they're doing with the space program on the day when I'm trying to do lunar landings in KSP. So we... uh. Yeah, we should be okay. So I'm going to switch this over to Minecraft for a little while, guys. Uh, and then 3.30, I'm going to take a break. Go grab something to eat. Um, and then we'll have HLS. <sighs> oh, man, I'm nervous about that now. <laughs> oh, my goodness. 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 Serious, I have the map open, man. All right, anyway. We have a, a really, 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 really packed day today. Yeah, Drake, that hasn't happened yet. Don't whisper me links to speculation, please. That Elon tweet has a whole new meaning now. I'm still going to go with my gut. Guys, I'm, st I'm still going to go with my gut. I'm going with... I'm going to say national national team in SpaceX is what we have. I I think I think it's I think it's NT in SpaceX if you really want my honest opinion. Nothing nothing against Dynetics but Dynetics is a great lander and I think they should it, it, either way the two be, if one or two people don't get the contract they should source them for cargo missions. You'd be stupid to not do that. <laughs> SpaceX is currently slated to launch a huge chunk of the Artemis program's launches. SpaceX will launch the initial gateway components, gateway resupply missions, 